Arbitrum has been gaining a lot of traction in the last year, and with its new Nitro upgrade, it's primed to become one of the top Layer 2 chains. In this video, I'm going to tell you everything you need to know about Arbitrum, including Nitro, Nova, Odyssey, and a potential airdrop. So what is Arbitrum? It's a Layer 2 scaling solution for Ethereum. That means because Ethereum was built to be secure, it can be costly and slow. To fix that, scaling solutions are built on top of Ethereum to use the security that it has, but it's built to be faster and cheaper because it doesn't use all the data that an Ethereum transaction uses. Arbitrum uses what's called an optimistic rollup, which helps speed up transactions while reducing costs by moving the computation and data storage off chain. Arbitrum is also able to support arbitrary EVM smart contracts and works with all Ethereum developer tools. So why does any of this matter? The reason this is so big is because Arbitrum is making it extremely easy for decentralized apps on Ethereum's layer one to port over to Arbitrum's layer two. When doing this, it will take the congestion off the Ethereum chain while also making the same applications people use faster and cheaper. And if you've ever tried to do a transaction on Ethereum back in November during the peak bull run, you know that transactions could easily cost $100 to $300 for the simplest task. That's why having all the same decentralized apps on Arbitrum, making them faster and cheaper is such a big deal. So what are all these different names? Arbitrum 1, Nitro, Nova, Odyssey. Let me clear up the confusion. Arbitrum actually has multiple chains. Arbitrum 1 is their mainnet, which is used mostly for NFTs and DeFi projects. Nitro is an upgrade that is coming to Arbitrum that's meant to bring faster transactions, lower fees, and a better user experience for building applications. So Nitro is just an upgrade to make everything faster and cheaper. Arbitrum Nova is for gaming, social platforms, and blockchain dApps with lots of volume, built on Arbitrum's AnyTrust technology that is more of a centralized alternative to optimistic rollups. So Arbitrum 1 is their main chain, which is used for NFTs and DeFi, and Arbitrum Nova is used more for gaming and things with a lot of transactions. But what is this Arbitrum Odyssey? Arbitrum Odyssey is their way at marketing the Arbitrum network. In order to get users to come over to the network, they have to have some kind of incentive for new users to want to join. It was meant to be an eight-week marketing plan to get users to interact with a bunch of different applications on the Arbitrum network, and users would be rewarded for it. It's like when you go to a grocery store and companies give out free samples in order to get you to try to buy more of this new product. Unfortunately, they had to stop it because there are too many transactions happening and the chain couldn't keep up. But now that this Nitro upgrade is happening on August 31st, 2022, it said that they'll be resuming the Arbitrum Odyssey effort shortly after. Thus, there will be a lot more users coming to the Arbitrum chain and applications soon. It's always important to know who's on the team of a project that you're looking into. So with Arbitrum, we have first Ed Felton. Ed Felton is the co-founder and chief scientist at Offchain Labs, the company that makes Arbitrum. And he's on leave from Princeton University, where he is the professor of computer science and public affairs. He also served at the White House as the deputy United States chief technology officer and senior advisor to the president which seems pretty impressive. Next, we have another co-founder, Steven Goldfeder. And Steven is the co-founder and chief executive officer, and he has a PhD from Princeton University working on cryptography and cryptocurrencies. He's also the co-author of Bitcoin and Crypto Technologies, the leading textbook on cryptocurrencies. And lastly, we have the other co-founder, Harry Kalodner. Hopefully I'm saying that right. He is the CTO at Offchain Labs, where he leads the engineering team. And before the company, he was a PhD at Princeton University, where he researched economics, anonymity, and capability of cryptocurrency. So it seems like a fairly capable team. Now, next, we want to see how much adoption this chain has had. And if we go to DeFi Llama, we can actually see some of the lockup values of different chains. And we come down here and Arbitrum is number seven on the total value locked up on this chain, which is pretty big. It's higher than Optimism, Phantom, and some of these other well-known chains. And it's climbing up the ranks pretty fast. And it has, you can see here, it has just under $1 billion TVL. And in the last seven days, it has gone up another 2%. So there is a lot of traction gaining from this naturally. And when the Odyssey effort kicks in and more users are coming to the chain, I think we're going to see this pass Solana very soon after because Solana is at 1.42 billion. So I think Arbitrum could soon pass Solana in TVL. So next, you're probably going to want to send some funds over to Arbitrum if you want to start using their apps. So what you can do is you can go to bridge.arbitrum.io. So here you can send funds from Ethereum to Arbitrum 1 or Arbitrum Nova, and you can send Ethereum, which is the main token on the networks. Now, some of the big apps that have been gaining traction on Arbitrum are GMX, which is a decentralized perpetual exchange. This one has been gaining a lot of traction recently. You can use GMX on Arbitrum or Avalanche, and you can leverage up to 30x on a decentralized trade platform, which is pretty big. I think GMX is going to be adding a lot more pairs here soon. You can see you have uh, the Ethereum, uh, Weath, Bitcoin, Link, Uniswap, USDC, USDT, DAI, and Frax currently. So I think they're going to be adding a lot more pairs, especially as Arbitrum becomes a bigger network. Another big app is DopeX, which is a decentralized options exchange. And lastly, on portal.arbitrum.one, you can see all the apps which have been ported over. We have a lot of the big ones, you know, 1inch, Aave, we have uh, Alchemy, 
We have some exchanges, we have like Binance. So all these different applications which have been on Ethereum and may have been slow or costly are now gonna be ported over to Arbitrum and now they'll become faster and cheaper. Now moving on, I'll add this link in the description below, but it's always important to know what the downsides are of something. There's never only upsides. So if we scroll down, we can see some of the risks and a lot of these are pretty complicated and technical. You know, if there's mistakes in the highly complex AVM implementation. So I'll leave you guys to go read through this if you want, but it's important to know what the downsides are as well. And lastly, how to get a potential Arbitrum airdrop of tokens. Currently, Arbitrum does not have a token, but it's very possible in the future that it will be. And I will link this thread as well to this guy who is Corleone's crypto. He made a good thread here on Twitter. And here you can see the list of things you need to do in order to potentially get an airdrop of tokens from Arbitrum. So number one, we have bridge the Ethereum mainnet to Arbitrum and Arbitrum Nova. Then two, interact with two or more dApps on Arbitrum and own two or more of the NFTs. And then on Guild XYZ, you can get rewards by completing tasks and then playing around on GMX and a hot protocol, liquidity pools by being a liquidity provider or trader on the Arbitrum network, and so on. So basically anytime a new chain comes out, they want to airdrop tokens to users who are using the chain, testing it out, trying out all the apps. So I recommend going and trying all these different apps to potentially get an airdrop. And that is everything you need to know about Arbitrum. I hope this video helped you guys out. And if you're new here, consider subscribing. I'll see you tomorrow.